Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dr. Pepper All-Star Hearthstone Tournament. Uh, coming up, we have our third match of the day between Rex, the winner of our first match, versus a new player we've seen, Galaxios. Um, to recap, Rex actually took the first series 2-0 over It's Wasted, and now he's up against, hopefully, a stronger opponent in Galaxios, who is also legend, uh, relatively... I would say on the lower level of Legend, but at the same time, Legend nonetheless. Uh, do you have any comment about either the first match, Rex in general, or his new opponent, Kungan? Well, uh, Rex played really well in the first game, and I think the opponent, it's going to be a much more even game this time. Rex kind of stomped its wasted, which was, you know, normal since the other guy was a rank 11 player, but now we're going to see two Legend players, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a nice game to see. I, rem I wonder if Rex is going to play, you know, if he's going to dominate this guy as well. It's going to be interesting to see. Now, if I recall, Rex's two classes were Druid and Handlock. Handlock, yes. So we do know that they are allowed to switch classes mm -hmm. and matches. Do you think that he will do so against his new opponent? Um, I mean, his opponent doesn't know what he played before, so if that's the two decks he's most comfortable, I would just go with the same thing again. Mm -hmm. And it seems like he is, right? Rex is the handlock and Galaxios is the... Well, it looks like a face hunter once again here. But again, it's you really cannot tell until you see a few more cards, especially now oh. with hybrid hunters. Galaxios is hunter. Okay, yes. And there we go. There's a high main. Once again, we see the hybrid hunter. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, what do you think about passing there, by the way? He passed the uh, abusive sergeant turn one play. Um, I think I would actually agree with it if, if he was watching the stream. Um, mm -hmm. so what I'm thinking is if Galaxios watched the stream from the first game and knew that Rex was handlock, I think that running Abuse of Sergeant just into a basic mortal coil is not the correct play. I think saving it to just get the two damage at least off the buff may be worthwhile against the handlock. Yeah. I mean, when I play on ladder, sometimes the hunters drop abusive on turn one, and sometimes they don't, even if they have it on hand. I've actually never figured out what is the best if you don't have another play. But I guess I it depends on what you play against. So I think if you're if you're uh, going first without the coin, then you don't, or then you don't do it because you don't want to give the handlock a free turn one play. Meanwhile, nice. if you do have the coin, I think then it's worthwhile because then for the uh, handlock to moral coil it they aren't able to tap on their turn two. That's correct. Yeah, I hear a problem here. That's uh, like everyone always says that it's so easy to play, you know, Hunter. I mean, this is not a face Hunter, but it plays kind of similar. Uh, but uh, I, I personally think it's a really hard deck to play because you always have a lot of decisions. Uh, <laughs> for example, he could have dropped Leper Gnome and Abusive here, but instead he chose the Hero Power. I mean, you, you have decisions, but they're all decisions on which way you go face. Yes, it's, yes, so that is true. Like <laughs> my right hand to move my mouse or my left hand. <laughs> but no, I, I do agree with you that it is a little bit more difficult than people make it out to be. Yeah, definitely. It's. I, I would consider, like, there is a lot of classes that are a lot easier to play, in my opinion, like Druid, for example. I so he can already get him extremely lower if he wanted to. Exactly. But, uh, he I think he should go all out, especially with the high main in hand now and the kill command. And he has a kill command. Yeah, he can do... How much damage can he do this turn? 10 damage and drop a Leper Gnome. So that's basically at 6 life, right? Mm -hmm. 10 plus 2, yeah. So he basically at 6 life yeah. and he has a kill command hero power the turn after. So even if he has... Well, we know he has Molten Giants and heals, so it would be a really dangerous play, but would you... I, I think I would go for it at this point when you play... I think When you play has. Hunter. Yeah. But then, at the same time, we do know Rex's hand that mm -hmm. would be incorrect. He would actually be able to double drop double Molten Giant and Shadow Flame, and then follow it up with a heal bot. Which would actually kind of mm -hmm. lead a little bit of trouble, but I think he's going to just go for it here. He's yeah. Throwing it all out. Face, face, and more face. <laughs> and even if, even like the Handlock has an answer, but it's, I mean, the Hunter, it's still looking pretty good for the Hunter. Mm -hmm. 
Now, would you Shadow Flame the Watcher or the Owl here? Um, what does he have on his hand? He doesn't have any taunt givers. Hmm, it's actually a hard decision. I mean, you. Hmm, I actually don't know what's the best play here. What do you think? Um, I was thinking of using obviously using Double Molten Giant, but I'm pretty sure that uh, using Shadow Flame on the Watcher may be better because if you have mm -hmm. to draw to a Taunt Giver, you're going to use it on the Molten Giants anyway. Anyway, yeah, that's true. So, and the... so having the two damage attack to attack into another minion the following turn may be very worthwhile. Definitely, I agree with you. And that way it, you can set up for a two turn lethal with Molten Giants going face each turn and finishing them off for the full 32 or 32 health. But he definitely, he cannot heal bot here. Oh, he might, oh, it looks like he's going for the heal bot play. I would prefer the Shadow Flame here and then heal bot the next turn. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's hard for a here. hunter to deal. Uh, uh, well, he does have the Leopard and six damage for... Six mana. Hmm. So it's, yeah, it is actually tough to play Shadow Flame here. I mean, hit six damage would kill you. I get, Your if, Skype is breaking up a little bit. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. He could have something. Well, uh, he probably does, but he could imagine a double Arcane Golem for eight damage would have ended him. Yeah. No commands, which he does have. I think it's still anyone's game at this point. Let's see here. So, so I guess you're shadow flaming this turn at least. Trade the trade the big game, shadow flame everything down. I think shadow flaming the watcher here would be yep. the best option. Yep. Um Your mic broke up by the way. So he has seven damage here, and uh, but that's not enough. His uh, the warlock is threatening leap till next turn. Wow, this is really awkward. He kind of has to kill command one of the giants here, which is not what you want to do. And no, you definitely never want to do that. But he, he's forced to do it. Oh, that's a good draw. Oh, that's really good. Now, what do you think about his decision to actually play the Hana Creeper over just Hero Empowering? He's just thinking, Hero does he have lethal here? He has 6 on hand. No, he doesn't have lethal. He has 17 damage. 17 here? Mm-hmm. So many possibilities. So the Hunter doesn't have any cards, and you're going up to 13 life here. Do you just go face and Siphon Soul here? To stay safe, or no? If anything, you siphon soul the haunted creeper. I think. Yeah, oh. to prevent the kill command. But... Yeah, he's playing the safe way, but I think that's correct. He has so much damage on hand. But imagine what a quick shot into quick shot into kill command. <laughs> Wait, no, but it. That is true. That is true. Quick no, it actually wouldn't always happen. A quick shot, quick shot, kill command wouldn't have killed him because it would have only been 12 damage. That's true. So, there was really no way. I've actually but, never played the face hunter with a quick shot so far, so I, I keep forgetting about that card. Mm -hmm. So the game is well, over here. Rex will take game one in this amazing upset. Wow, I guess this healbot play did really pay off. Uh, Galaxios just wasn't able to draw into any final damage. Having to use that kill command for the high main was really brutal. Yep. What, what do you think about this matchup these days? I remember in the past, Hunter was a big favorite, but with the heal bots and, you know, Jaraxxus and cards like that, do you still think they are a heavy favorite in this matchup? I wouldn't say heavily favored, yeah. but I would say in general, yes, the Hunter is favored. It, because it but it's not by much, lot. right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it just still requires a handlock to draw into the correct cards. I mean, if you don't, like, for example, if he didn't have the Molten Giants there, just yeah. especially the Hunter's Hero Power would have just 
taken him all the way to zero, and there's nothing he could have done about it. Um, obviously, the heal bot would have helped a lot, but... Yeah, every time you have a matchup where one player has to draw the right cards, I guess he is the underdog. The mm -hmm. Hunter is kind of winning. I mean, the Hunter will always get a pretty good start, while Handlock might get a terrible start. Since so they have going. mostly bigger units. Two, we have Rex on the Druid and Galaxios on the Zoo. Oh, so kind this is a... another bad matchup for Rex here. <laughs> kind of a very interesting dichotomy between the players. We have Rex, who has very control style uh, classes with the Handlock and the Druid. Meanwhile, we have Galaxios, who has the Hybrid Hunter, which is sort of an aggro type deck get bored, kill him fast. And then you play Zoo, also a very similar type deck. I mean, looking at the decks beforehand, the aggro player would be the favorite here since he had, you know, Hunter against Handlock and Sui's favorite against Druid. But the Rex has been playing really good so far. Um, Let's see. Pretty slow start for the Druid this game. I think he would be in trouble here. He does have the two swipes though, but I mean, he has an egg. And uh, a lot of the Zoo units, I mean, swipe doesn't really do a lot these days against Zoo. I mean, there's very few units with one life, for example. I'm actually a little bit surprised he didn't coin out the Knife Juggler into Egg into Void Terror here. But I guess saving the Knife Juggler for an implosion play could pay off. It's, it's just so yeah. much damage. <laughs> and he can do it on turn five. I honestly think Knife Jogger and Implosion is probably one of the best two card combos in the game. Definitely. He does okay. have a swipe for the Implosion though, luckily. I guess that's mm -hmm. what you really want swipe for in this matchup these days. You keep it for the Implosion more or less. That Unless you really have to use it. Boss spawns after a few turns getting some effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So what do you think his best option here is? Would you rather implosion or would you rather trade and... Oh, wow. That's I don't think that's good. very good for the druid, but he does have a savage roar though, so he could actually use that egg. I don't think that's that bad for the druid. Um... Well, without the savage roar, it would definitely not have been good in any kind of way. I don't think they have anything else to activate it, do they? Would you prefer to swipe or sludge belcher here? Hmm. Swipe. Swipe is pretty good here. It leaves well uh, just the in gang boss if he if he uses the shelter here. But at the same time, if he does belcher, it'll probably end up forcing him to trade his four four in and allowing him to swipe that the following turn. I think he should swipe it. I mean, belcher. Hmm. I, I think I can get punished by a power, over, power overwhelming or just by an abusive sergeant on the three one here. Like an abusive alone kills the belcher here. But yeah. But I think saving swipe just kind of fill out his curve because if he did swipe, what would he do turn six? Um, obviously he doesn't have another swipe, but you don't want to use both of them before you've seen an implosion. Mhm. Mm that is true. What would you think about? Killing off your 3 1 first. And then. Ooh, I don't know. You could get punished here with the implosion. <laughs> could definitely be punished here. Which would you implosion in? I was going oh, for that. Poor. Well, personally, my implosion always hits for two, so I would actually yeah. choose the Belcher. <laughs> uh. But yeah, this was definitely the right play when it's at for three or four. I mean... Oh no. Here we go. Swipe is looking pretty good here. <laughs> the swipe. This is bad. Yeah, this is really bad. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but he kind of ran into swipe completely there. Uh, it could not have been the right play, could it? I mean, when you make a play when Swipe alone is a board clear, I don't think that's the correct play ever against the Druid, especially when he hasn't used it before. I feel like that move, but but at the same time, he didn't have that many choices, and it was a good play. If the Druid didn't have Swipe, it would have very likely ended the game. That is true, but is it worth the risk when you're 
in a favorable matchup. Ooh, Malganis is good. Now, this is always an interesting argument. Would you have killed the Void Caller? So, by killing it on your turn, it prevents um, the Warlock from really choosing what pops out, but at the same time, it can really come back to bite you in the butt. Mm hmm. What can I do here? Is Savage Roar an option here, along with Swipe? Or anything? He's got a lot of choices. Yes. Uh, obviously he has to kill off this Melganis, that's priority number one. You... You could... I mean, you should be able to keep up the Dr. Boom here. You well, don't really have to use it. I Melganis using Savage Roar to finish off Malganus with a boom bot. And the Imp Gang boss, or? And then... Yeah, I mean, it all depends what happens with the bombs as well here, but I kinda, I kinda like the Savage Roar swipe here. So I guess you do this first, yeah, exactly. Hmm, or do you swipe first to actually put it... I mean, it depends on what you want the bombs on, I guess. How much? Oh, he's going. Actually, not bad at all, is there? Yeah. Is it? Hmm, he's at six life against the druid without any taunts. Yeah, that is not a good situation to be in. So I think first thing first would be implosion. I think you have to. Imp yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want that bomb on your or face. Okay, three oh, wow. Three is pretty bad. <laughs> Get in there and fight, maggot. Yeah, I think you have to break the egg here. You have to get a strong board. Hmm, it actually turned out pretty good for him. I mean, the druid doesn't have any direct damage. That's why it's kind of strange that he went face as well already. I mean, putting the Warlock at 6 when you don't have any damage follow-up is a little bit weird, but it does stop him from tapping. She goes with that trick. Hazard. So I think he really wanted to get the Shade out here in order to start getting yeah. up in order to finish off the Warlock. Wait, why did... Oh, he was trying to tap into Argus. That was only out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he killed himself to the Shade. Yeah. What a comeback. That was... Especially with such a strong hand from uh, Galaxios at the beginning with that zoo deck. I think Rex made all the correct plays to finish off that series, taking it 2-0 oh. over Galaxios. He's playing really well, Rex, so far. Mm-hmm. And our, uh, our initial thought is still correct. The higher legend players, so far, every single game, every single match is won 2-0. Yep. Uh, it's been quite the difference between the legend ranks so far as well. I mean, uh, Rex and Kuja being like three, four hundred ranked and the other players being above four thousand on the legend rank. So it's a, quite a big difference. Just because the Rex is playing. That ladder actually really sh sometimes shows skill. Um, I guess once again, we are ready for a break. Thank you all for tuning in. And please stick around for some more hitting matches.